Thank you. Ah, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here today. Have you heard any voices in your mind? Do you have? Yes. Yeah, right? <laughs> have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love doing yoga. It helps make my voices go away. Voices. Like judging me, criticizing me, angered, afraid, jealous, curious, and dreamed. I don't know. I don't remember when it started. They talk around the big table in my mind. They started talking more after I lost my hair and all at the same time pulling me in different directions. Even when I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna eat for my dinner, they have a small meeting. <laughs> and now, a big meeting is happening. It's chaos. I can hear that voice. Just walk forward. It's a simple thing, Paul. Yes, sir. Yo! I don't want to go that way. I want to punch the motherfuckers' faces in. Uh, I don't want to go anywhere. Uh, I want to disappear. I want to play. I need Peace. I need a life. Finding someone to love and laugh with. There is no time for such a stupid thing. <laughs> we always need a love. You can't have it. You ugly old woman. Stop bringing me down. You boring workaholic man. I love being a workaholic. The only way you can win is to just keep working. Winning what? Against who? We've been like a race horse with blind eyes on, seeing only the front, running till we cannot move anymore. Do you want to make the same mistake we've made before? Shut up, woman. I'm not going to shut up this time. You shut up. What? Stop! I don't know what I really want anymore. Let go. It's time to follow your path. You don't need to obligate yourself to anything. What is my path? What is my path? Then voices stop. My path. You know the song my way, right? <laughs> da -da, da -da, da -da. I learned this song in English. When I was around 10, my brothers were 8. Papa, my father, forced us to memorize this song while we drove around with him in the car. If we made a mistake or couldn't recall the lyrics, he pinched our thighs. Mm. My friend, I will say it clear and come in aside, Papa. We couldn't understand why we had to memorize this song. Uh, and, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. My way. A couple of years ago, I was in an MFA acting program. My first year teacher, Elizabeth, guided us toward a deeper and more honest place. She encouraged us to find our essential need. In one of the exercises, we picked a person to whom we needed to speak, and we set up the specific personal space we could feel safe. Papa! I said, you pinched us because you, because we couldn't memorize the song? 
You can't speak English either. Don't force your way on us. <sighs> After I said it, I started accusing imaginary Papa of this and that, telling him that he was the king of broken promises. He promised me he'd give me a dog if I made my grades up. I did. You have to keep them up consistently. I felt my inner tiger under my belly. I hate my father. He's a fucking king. When I break his fucking rules, I'm punished. Can't go out with friends, can't eat all day. He made me stand outside on the fucking cold winter night. One day, he took me and brothers to Nagoya Castle. There's a moat there. He grabbed me from the back seat and tried to throw me in. He threatened us because we were not good kids for him. After that, he took us to a police station. Oh, if you are not good, I'll hand you over to the police. You will go to a prison. We believe this fucking shit. You know, we were already in prison. There's a series of punishments he fucking doled out to us. A punishment of tickling till we screamed. A punishment of cold shower. A punishment of no sleep. If we shamed him in public, like running around in the department store or something, when we got home, if this was the time of the samurai, you'd be put to death. So go and out it! It's not the fucking 14th century! At the end of the semester, we had to show him our grades. He was never satisfied with our result. He hit us with bamboo sticks and plastic rulers. When we go to school with bruises and the smell of a tiger bomb, other kids made fun of us and called him Samurai Dad. I really want to leave this fucking house and never go back again! I have never expressed myself like that to Papa. Because I know what would have happened next if I did. On the other hand, I could tell anything to my mom. She was always good, kind and funny, listening to our stories. When I was seven, I was talking to her. I, I don't want to do what Papa told me to do. Yoshiko-chan, don't think that way. But I'm not Papa's robot. I thought we were alone but he was listening to our conversation through an intercom. He came up to upstairs and hit me. And I couldn't leave the house for entire holiday week, and I couldn't even go to the famous kids festival called One Pak Matsuri, means Naughty Kids Festival. All my friends went there, but not me, because I said something wrong. I avoid it honest communication with him. I lied and asked the mom to cover up for me and I, I tried to please him and try to live up to his expectation. Being good is my survival method. But Elizabeth, my acting teacher asked us to follow our impulses and be honest and truthful. Can I do that? Trust yourself. Trust what you've done. You are enough. Am I enough? Uh, am I enough? Am I enough? I am enough. You know, I had never felt enough for Papa. I think uh, when I was around um, 
four years old. I believe that when I became an adult, I would have a penis. I thought I would be a man. Why? Because Papa told me I would. <laughs> when I saw him peeing on the street, I thought he was cool because I couldn't do it. Then he said, my penis would grow. <laughs> that was a lie. I was waiting for my penis. <laughs> One day, we were driving over a mountain. Um, uh, Papa, I want to pee. Oh, do it on the street. Well, you can't because you are a girl. He did it on the street, but I couldn't, so, so I held it. After one hour, I couldn't hold it anymore. Uh, Papa, I can pee in a bush. Huh. If you pee in a bush, many poisonous insects poke your ass and you'll die. <laughs> so I held it one more hour. And, uh, then, if you hold your pee for such a long time, your pee go around your body and will mix with your blood and eventually go to your brain and you will be a crazy person. Eventually, I peed in between bush and highway. It was shameful. You know, if I were a boy, I wouldn't have this trouble. In my house, a traditional Japanese martial arts house, men are important, women serve them. And Papa used to say that, be like me. I try. It was easier and no problem when I was very young, but my boobs started growing. No penis. <laughs> and besides, he was making fun of me while he was passing by. Oh, you look like a woman. What can I do? And he didn't teach me kudo. Kudo is a Japanese martial arts, like uh, archery. Hear this sound? This is a kudo sound. But my grandpa taught me how to do kudo. It's, we use a long bow, mostly made of bamboo, about 221 centimeters. You use your own energy to shoot the arrow at the target, about 28 meters away. Good concentration and balance are key. When I was a little, I was always watching how Papa practiced Kudo. It was beautiful and scary. When I was around middle school, he started teaching Kudo to my brothers exclusively. I wasn't into Kudo. It was too much stillness, too slow, too much zen. I liked playing basketball. <laughs> but my height wasn't high enough to be a basketball player. But it's okay. I had a secret desire to be an actress. So I wanted to go to Tokyo, but Papa wouldn't let me. He wanted me to be a pharmacist. So I had to take the exam to be a pharmacy major. I failed all of them. <laughs> I needed to pass just one, any major in Tokyo so I can leave the house. Finally, I got into a business program and he let me go. Papa and my brothers helped me to move while they were leaving. I pretended I was nervous to be alone, but in fact, when their car turned the corner, I was like, yes, 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 I am free, I am free. <laughs> During the first semester, I was crazy. Why not? No Papa there. I belong to a social club, and one night, we went to a yakata ship, which is a famous summer activity in Tokyo. <laughs> People eat and drink on the boat at river. River party. Unlimited food and drink. Eating is my favorite thing in the world. Fresh sashimi, tempura, nabe. So good. First time drinking. Beer. 
Japanese sake, wine, vodka, <laughs> bourbon, <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> I didn't know my limitations yet. <laughs> no idea. Soon after, I felt like I was walking on the moon. <laughs> I puked a lot. When we docked, the senior student had to carry me out. They almost called an ambulance because they thought I got alcohol poisoning. No, 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 I didn't. I just passed out. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to do something that I could never do at my father's house. One day, I got a call from my mom. Yoshiko-chan, ah, last year, Papa got to Tokyo to work for a job. Yoshiko, don't you worry. Papa will come to Tokyo next week for his business and will stop by my place. Huh? <laughs> now, Papa got to last year to. What are you doing, Gaza? If Papa got to die, Papa will kill him and kill himself. I don't remember what she said after that. Da, 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 da. Da 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 Killing him! I don't wanna see the his fucking face again! We gonna kill him! No, I can't! What are we gonna do, huh? He's gonna come soon, yo! I know! I want to die! Just kill him. Don't be so dramatic. Fuck you, man. What else can we do? We broke his fucking rules. We're gonna get beat. Shh, guys. Yes, we bought a TV, mini audio system, full size mirror, and a washing machine. Buying that was strictly prohibited. Calm down now. Let's think of what? How to hide the fucking washing machine? He wants us to wash our clothes with our hands on fucking washing board. Bullshit. Shut up. We must think of a reasonable excuse that will not make him mad. They were gift or something. Why do we have to lie? We didn't do anything bad. It's against his order, that's all. That's not fair. Other friends don't have to worry about this. It's not fucking matter. He's coming and seeing this spot. Oh, that's it. We are safe if he doesn't see this stuff. If we are not here, when he wants to come here, he's not gonna come. He doesn't like to wait. So, I asked Ma to tell him that I suddenly got a class on that day, so I didn't meet him. Another thing I wanted was curly, light brown hair. <laughs> I really wanted it since my high school, but it was prohibited. So when I became free in Tokyo, I went to a beauty parlor and had my hair pumped. But I didn't have enough money to dye light brown. Then I thought, it's summer. Maybe I can bleach my hair with the sun. It happened in a comic book, which I read before. So I stuck my head out the window, but the color didn't change. Maybe the sun burned my scalp, not my hair. No one knows. After a month, my hair started falling out. turned out the way Papa wanted me to. He will be disappointed with me. In Japan, it's a big celebration to turn 20 years old. And my grandma promised to do my hair a traditional style on that day. I dreamed of it and waited for the day. 
my doctor said it's maybe stress, maybe my weak immune system. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But, but my grandma used to say that that lack is caused by our sins. So I did something wrong. God punished me. Hair is a woman's life. We say, Am I no longer a Japanese girl? Please tell me what should I do? I'll do anything. Stupid. Sticking your head out the window and bleaching your hair. Do you have a brain? That didn't cause it. That must be the trigger. How about the social club? You were too wild. Other kids fucking did it too. Then you guys are weak. No. You put too much pressure on us for the college entrance exams. Rejections after rejections. Back and forth talking home. Everybody takes exams. And I know how to get through things. Just follow me. That's all. We were stressed out because you've never listened to us. I'm doing my best. If you don't like this, get out of here. No, I won't go anywhere. Stop, please. It's, it's my fault we are losing hair. I'm sorry. Papa and my mom visited me. He stood there. He saw my head. Half of my hair is gone. Papa, it's not your fault. What the fuck did I just say? I don't know why I said it like that. Who gave us fucking stress? Fuck him. I know, but he seemed so shocked in seeing me. Fucking shit, me. Um, is, is it my fault we are losing hair? How have I sinned? No, it's, it's no one's fault. It, it's a, it's a sign from nature. Nothing happens without meaning. I don't get it. It's his fucking fault, isn't it? I don't need a fucking sign. Fuck. Papa wanted to bring me back home. But I stayed in Tokyo, in college, and trying to be an actress. So I wore a wig and I pretended I, I was fine. But I was paranoid that the people would notice it. So I had many wigs, the same style. So every few weeks, I changed it to make look my hair like growing naturally. It was awful during the summer with heat like tight knit cap. I took off my wig at my parents' house, but I hid myself from everyone and asked the mom to close all the curtains. One day, Papa took me out to see a movie, Babe. You know, it's a lovely pig movie. <coughs> Papa calls my mom, Butachan. Piggy, because she's a little bit fat. <laughs> In Japan, people call the fat people buta, a pig. So, Papa called my mom, boku no buta chan, my piggy. When we saw the movie poster, he said, Oh, Mama is here. Let's watch it with our piggy. So, I sat between Papa and Mom. In the middle of the movie, Babe gets sick, can't move. Now, Mr. Hage, the father character, is a stubborn and quiet, usually expressionless. He calls a doctor to get the medicine and try to get Babe to drink the medicine out of a baby bottle. But Babe is too sick to drink it. If I had words to 
to make the day for you. I do sing you a morning golden and true. I would make this day last all time and feel the night deep in moonshine. Babe, try to drink it, but can't continue. Ta 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 ta. and we, we pretended that we didn't notice it. <laughs> Once I heard from my mom that they met at the Kudo club at their high school. He was 18, she was 15. There was an event for graduating class that featured performances. My mom, high school freshman, gathered some people together and put on the show for the event. She played the main male character and let the school principal play the villain, and she killed him on stage. <laughs> I'm sure that Papa had never met someone like her in his entire life. <laughs> After that, he sent a postcard to suggest her to practice kudo at his house. <laughs> also, families are super against their marriage because they came from different class. But he pushed through it. He almost ready for leaving house for being with her. One time I teased him about it, and he said, you know, I saved her life. Otherwise, no one would marry her. But mama is funny, you know? So I wouldn't be bored with her. Mm -hmm. I like this story, because then I know they love each other. When I was 20, I had a boyfriend who, was, who never saw me without a wig. I stayed at his place all the time. We traveled together. We went to the same college. We worked at the same place. Still, he never saw me without a wig. I brought my illness into every argument we had. I just wanted to look normal. <laughs> Normal human beings have hair, but I don't. Love? Huh. Ridiculous. I don't need it. I have a dream. I will be an actor. I need hair. Papa told me that I lost my hair because I left him, because I betrayed him. No, that's not true. I will prove it to him. So I need to fix this. I have to keep working. Find a way to fix this. I must fix this. At 20, at age 21, I was running around trying to do anything to fix my hair. I went to many hospitals and pharmacies, however, because of the strange medicines I was taking to fix my hair, I got terrible skin disease. My skin started oozing. It spread all over my body. My legs, my arms, my chest, my shoulders, my neck, and the face. It felt like my skin was melting. I wrapped myself in a bunch of white bandages.
like a mummy. I couldn't manage by myself in Tokyo, so I had to go back to my father's house. Lying on the bed, I'm breathing. <laughs> That's it. Staying on the ceiling, squeaking sound on my bed, fabric straps to tie my arms to keep me from scratching, footsteps, voices, each ache, pain, no energy, none. One day, Papa popped his head through the door. You can be an actress. What? How? You can get a part as a monster or alien. You don't need a special makeup. <laughs> Laugh at yourself. It's impossible. I cannot do it. Oh, you have energy to talk back. That's good. He named me Hage-chan. Baldy. And he sometimes called me alien. Go back to Mars. Till I got upset. I couldn't understand him. Maybe he wanted to get the rise out of me, but my condition got worse. So he put me in the hospital. Three times a day. My bandages were changed. Each time I saw my face in the mirror, I wanted to break it. No hair, no skin, red and raw, like a monster. When I was at the second year of my acting training. I asked my teacher, Jacqueline, to let me play male intense character. But she assigned me to play Sonia from Chekhov's play, Uncle Vanya. His voice vibrates so tenderly. I can still hear it ringing in the air. But he couldn't understand when I talked about a younger sister. Oh, how dreadful not to be beautiful. It's dreadful. Breathe. Take all the time you need. And I know I am I am not beautiful. I know <laughs> I know I know That's right for the beauty. She had never given up on me. On my 22nd birthday, I was still in the hospital that morning. After my bandages were changed, I was just watching TV. After 10 a.m., I heard a knock at the door. It opened. Red roses appeared. They were from Papa. <laughs> Ten roses. Wine red. Like a soft velvet. <sighs> Lovely. 
lovely smell. After 5 p.m., he came into my hospital room. Papa! But he just walked through to the window and checked the roses in the vase. Don't let them dry out. Sure, Papa. Thank you. Take care of the roses. Goodbye. He just walked out. <laughs> he didn't look at me at all. <laughs> I dream of wearing a white wedding dress, settle down, being a mother. But at the same time, I want to fall in love passionately, like in books or movies, following my feelings, throwing everything away, living for love, you know? I have a friend from high school. His name is Hiramas. I had a thing for him. One time he told me that the most beautiful time for women is between age 21 and 24. <laughs> Great! I'm in a beautiful time and I don't even have skin. <laughs> when Papa gave me roses, something changed. Even though I don't see myself in the mirror as a human being, he still sees me as a woman. He cares about us? It's weird. I can hardly believe it. At least he doesn't hate us. I don't know how to react to this. I know. Therefore, we need a new voice to take, take care of the situation, to help us to communicate with him. Something uh, fresh, something uh, pure, just uh, like New born. We'll name it Moo. Moo! I love roses. What the fuck is he? What? What? She? What? Watch your language. It's a baby. Listen. We can't change the past, but we can create a new self every moment. Open to new possibilities. Take this as an uh, opportunity. Opportunity? For what? Make new memories with him. Close the eyes. See through from the third eye. Let breath in. Let breath out. Feel the ground. The earth. The sky and listen, listen to something noises, voices, sounds in the world, birds, trees, wind. Raining, ocean, heartbeat, surrender to Mother Nature, nature is I, I am nature. And I feel I'm a part of this universe. I 
I'm sorry. Please, forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Let it be. Let it go. I was in the hospital for three months. After that, I lived with my parents for a while. So I had a time to make new memories with him. I wanted to start from the beginning, as a baby. Papa, I'm zero years old now. Oh, that's why you don't have hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> then why is your skin so red? Oh, baby's skin is super sensitive, so you should protect me. Okay. We started communicating step by step, starting simply, like simple thing, you know, going to see a movie as usual, but talking about it afterwards. Sometimes he took me to a sushi place after the movie. I still remember those moments of silence between us. We enter the restaurant, get a table, look at the menu, decide what to eat, order. How is work? Fine. Oh, I'm going to Hokkaido next week. Jealous? <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to Hokkaido too. <laughs> when your skin gets a little better, so you can go wherever you want. Just be patient. Right? coming this Friday. <laughs> Let's go to see it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> to Tokyo to finish my college. After that, I joined a theater company. It was there that I met someone who I really felt something, but I, I could never express it to him. Step up! Ms. Aston yelled at me during the first class of my third year of acting. Don't pretend you don't know things. You already know. Use your experience. Fully live. I was awake. I played lady in the play. Orpheus descending. Who 
need to have a life in her. Think from your womb. It's okay to think from my womb because I had one. Do you mind play a man? I always wanted to play a man. She assigned me to play the Burman in the play in the Barber Tokyo Hotel. An intense Japanese male character. <laughs> you know this man well. Yes, I do. <laughs> he was seduced by an American woman. Feel your penis. <sighs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I play Ruth from the play The Homecoming. Who needs to be needed? as a woman. You have a vagina. You don't need to show it. Just <laughs> be with it. <laughs> she pulled the things out of me and explored them. She gave me, gave me the power to believe in possibility. I have everything. A womb, a penis, a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams come true. I can finally be sexy. I can be sexy too. Uh, don't forget, we are the same gender. She said, feel your penis means I have a penis. No, I don't. It's acting. Huh. I used my five senses to create it. Here is my sensory penis. <laughs> Big. <laughs> cool. Can I tell Papa about this? No, 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 no. He will question what we have learned here. <laughs> Let's keep it secret. Once, Papa and I traveled together to Eastern Europe. It was a free tour package, and Mom was sick, so he took me. I never saw him so happy before. He was so relaxed. When we were in Budapest, we went to a wine bar with a live gypsy music band. It was free, unlimited drink. I tried all kinds of wine. I got super drunk, and I could barely walk. So other people took the tour bus to go back to their hotel, but Papa and I walked. We walked over the bridge, and I was jumping around and telling him random stupid stuff, and he was just making sure that I wouldn't fall into the river. <laughs> there are things I don't know about my father's past. He has been through his life as the first son of the house, older brother, Husband, father, kudo player, and teacher. He had a day job to take care of his family, make sure that we had an education. He practiced more than anybody. He still does it, morning and night. I started seeing him in different way. He gives himself fully to Kudo. When he was in Tokyo on his business, we had a lunch at the Tokyo station. Oh, Hagechan, let's eat sushi. Your hair needs tuna. Huh, <laughs> someone's looking at you. Maybe she notices your wig. Maybe, I don't care. Come on, give me your reaction. Why, Papa, you wanna make me mad? Yeah, it's funny when you're mad. <laughs> Papa, what? Hageta. You know, Papa, you are getting bald too. <laughs> I'm only front part, but you're totally hugging. And I'm not young like you. Fine. <laughs> I have a question, let me ask you. What? Um, when you were younger, did you have a dream? I didn't have any dreams. But, but, but you said before you wanted to be a history major, wanted to be a historian. Doesn't matter. 
Uh, I'm not like you. Oh, I wanna be an actress, go to Tokyo, lose hair. <laughs> I'm not like you. I had to take over the family business. My parents, your grandparents wanted me to do that. It was okay. It was my obligation as their son. Under the circumstances, I found what I wanted. You should do the same thing I did. I don't want to give up. Papa, you are teaching a kid in different countries too. Oh, that's difficult. Why don't you study English and help me? I'm thinking to study English in America. What do you think? Whatever. It's your life. Right. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> do it by yourself. Sure. What is this? I need to save my money, so please pay for this lunch. <laughs> when can you treat me? Someday when I'm rich, please do it before I die. <laughs> So, I came to the United States. For one year, I was in Oregon, only studying English. No theater, no acting. When I came back to the theater as an usher, I saw blue lights, shadows, actors in a circle warming up with their director. It was like a ritual ceremony. I knew where I belonged. After three years, I got into an MFA acting program in New York City, but I had to ask my father's support. Don't ever think you can be an actress. I know. At least I can speak English better by graduation. Oh, that's good. English is useful. Then come back to Japan to be an English teacher so I can die without worrying about your future. When I called Japan, and if he answered the phone almost every time, he'd say, wasting time and money calling Japan. Don't use Japanese. Study. I'm busy. Bye-bye. <laughs> but a few minutes later, Yoshiko-chan, Papa told me you called. He hung up. I just wanted to talk to him. You know he's shy, and I know he's happy that he heard your voice. We repeated this same conversation over and over. On my graduation day, mom told him about it. He said to her, I am proud of Yoshiko. She's my daughter. I made him proud. So I, wanted, I, I really wanted to do something to make something happen as an actor. But walls in the walls. She can't speak English. Your English has improved. You look too unique. You are different. You don't need to be an actress. I believe in you. Tell her give up. Stop doing the ridiculous thing and come back to help us. This is it? No! No. What do I want? I want Why am I still wearing a wig? Once, once at the theater company in Tokyo, I did a play called Take Off. 
My character talks gossip to another actress in the dressing room. After the third performances, director called me. Yoshiko, why don't you take off your wig during the scene? Ah, you are not ready. Continue to be fake, loser. Don't change anything, okay? I stopped breathing. Taking off my wig? No, 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 it's impossible. I cannot do it. But maybe this is the chance. Chance for what? I don't know, not to be fake? What are you gonna think? Weird? No, maybe I can do it next time. When? I don't know. Now? No. I wanna change. It was like gigantic poop had exploded from my body. <laughs> it was like blue sky opened up for me. Audience got shocked, but I felt good. <laughs> Director called me over. Yoshiko, you did it. You felt comfortable on stage, didn't you? Yes. Remember. This is just the beginning. Good job today. Arigatou gozaimashita! <laughs> Once, mom told me that, papa said to her, I hope Yoshiko has been guided by good teachers. I, I haven't seen him for seven years. Last December, I sent the newspaper to my parents, which, which covered my story and this project. She showed it to him. He said, it's good Yosuko is doing what she likes to do, but then how she can survive? If that's right, I have no idea. <laughs> On New Year's Day, I called my home. Mom was dragging him down to the phone. I don't have a daughter. You are living there. I'm busy. Bye bye. I didn't know how to react for a second. Mom was like, You know, he didn't mean. Mom, I know. It's okay. Maybe he'll let me go. I'm free. But. A week ago, mom told me when she was so worried about me, my future, he said to her, don't worry about Yoshiko. She's doing what she likes to do. She will figure it out. He trust me. Papa, I'm sorry I'm not there. Arigatou. Thank you. I am following my heart and finding my way. Wherever I go, whatever I do, I will find this place, this moment. Lights, please. Now, January 26, 2014 at Center for 
remembering and sharing. I am here in this room with all of you. Thank you so much. you